For a first-hand look at an eastern native forest, let's travel to an unlikely location, the Six Flags Amusement Park near the hectic Washington, D.C. Beltway in Largo, Maryland. Every day, thousands of motorists drive this stretch of highway past what used to be called Wild World, now Six Flags. What they don't know is they're driving within 20 feet of a piece of natural history. A tiny triangular patch of forest of about 40 acres called the Beltwoods. While it's not true virgin forest where people have never cut trees, it's one of the oldest, most important patches of forest left in all of Maryland. It's a haven for migratory songbirds coming up from the tropics. It has poplar and other trees up to 5 feet wide, 150 feet tall, and almost 300 years old. Although there's garbage and invasive plants in the area, it sure is different than almost any other forest you visit in Maryland. You could in fact spend almost a lifetime in the eastern U.S. and pretty much never see a site like this. It's hard to imagine a time when there were wild old forests all the way from Maine to Florida. This rare glimpse into the past can hopefully teach us some sort of lesson for the future. Although they may not be native forests like the Beltwoods, many eastern national forests contain large areas of secondary forests that need protection under the law. This is yet another reason to end the pointless practice of logging our national forests. Further west, the boundary between the native forests of Yellowstone National Park and the clear-cut Targhee National Forest in Idaho seem almost unbelievable. Take away the boundary line, though, and we see again the difference between national parks and national forests. Nowhere is the need to protect America's national forests greater than in Idaho. This incredible map shows all national forests in light green. The other two colors show all roadless areas on national forests, the dark green being protected, mostly wilderness areas, and the reddish brown unprotected. Right away we see that Idaho has by far the largest tracts of wild, roadless forests left in the lower 48 states. The state has just over 20 million acres of national forests, and an incredible 14 million are still wild and free of roads. Most, but not all of those roadless acres are forested. Of that 14 million acres, about 5 million, shown here, have lasting protection in wilderness and other designated areas. Now for the unbelievable part, that in central Idaho, which in terms of wildness, is the lower 48 states equivalent of the Amazon jungle, that 9 million acres or 14,000 square miles of these wildlands still have no permanent protection. Currently, this would come in the form of new wilderness areas, and none have been declared in Idaho since 1980, more than 25 years ago. One solution for the wildlands of central Idaho is to end logging on public lands and to protect all of these national forests at once, permanently. Here on the Salmon National Forest in Idaho, the Forest Service has cut a big wild area in half with a single road. It's worth talking about these roads for a minute because modern logging doesn't just mean cutting trees, it means building roads, and lots of them. After a century of logging, our national forests alone are now fragmented by a staggering 380,000 miles of taxpayer-subsidized logging roads. That's enough to circle the Earth at the equator three times. And then to stretch all the way to the moon. And then to go around the moon at its widest point another 10 times. These roads fragment wildlife habitat and cause direct injury and death to wildlife from collisions with automobiles. They cause erosion and landslides, putting silt in the creeks and rivers and harming fish like salmon. Logging roads also open up areas that used to be wild to further development. This can be seen throughout the Amazon rainforest, 
where new roads and highways have caused an environmental catastrophe. It's not like America is lacking for roads in the first place. In June of 2000, the Associated Press reported that no spot in the lower 48 states is more than 20 miles from the nearest road. The thoroughfare ranger station in Yellowstone National Park being the farthest. We've gone from a sketchy network of dirt wagon trails 150 years ago to, well, to this. Oh, wait, no, wait. No, that's not the right map. I mean to this. Wow, now that's a serious map. Looking at this map, we see that Western Oregon and Washington, despite having almost no people, we're talking west of Seattle and Portland here, is some of the most densely roaded land in the entire United States. On this map, we can also clearly see the big areas of roadless forest that we visited earlier in Idaho. Remember, this is a map of road density only, as well as some of the larger western national parks, Olympic in Washington, Yellowstone in Wyoming, Glacier in Montana, and North Cascades also in Washington. When they were first created, our national forests presented a chance to leave large areas of nature free of roads, perhaps the best chance that we had. It bears mentioning again that that didn't happen, and our national forests are now covered with almost 400,000 miles of logging roads. Not only enough to go to the moon with miles to spare, but eight times the length of the entire interstate highway system. Back in Idaho, we can perhaps better appreciate the beauty and importance of a place like this, a roadless stretch of the St. Joe National Forest. Of course, you'd think that given how little of the country is still free of roads, as we just saw, and that it's on public lands that this would be protected, but you would be wrong. Moving to the Pacific Northwest, Google Earth shows us a pretty stark picture. It's certainly not hard to find examples of logging on public lands. The Pacific Northwest also provides a good opportunity to get a sense of what the land was like before European settlement. Perfect place to do this is on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. Flying in from space, we see a large dark green area that's Olympic National Park. Outside the dark green is national forest and private land. We can extrapolate that if you go back about 150 years, that almost all of the left-hand portion of this image would have been the dark green that you see here in Olympic National Park. Except, of course, for areas of rock and ice, large burns, and other openings. On a closer scale, the peninsula provides yet another example of the difference between National Park, seen here in dark green, National Forest, mid-elevation mountains covered in clear cuts, and finally the flatter lowlands in private hands, much more of an agricultural operation than a forest ecosystem. Olympic National Park also features the lower 48 states' longest stretch of wild coastline at about 60 miles, shown here as a strip of dark green along the western edge of the Olympic Peninsula. In this image, you can mentally fill in the area of cut over national forest and private land between the dark green of Olympic National Park, both in the main park and in the strip of coastal forest that we just visited. 